tech. Let's hurry up and do this before they uh, hire an owner. Right. <laughs> and then we'll have to reshoot that one. Mm -hmm. Welcome to an emergency meeting edition of Welcome to the Sports Office. Uh, yes, something this is so, something, something may have happened today. If you didn't know, um, it's snowing. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and of course, the Broncos have a new head coach. Uh, we normally shoot these on Wednesdays and of course Thursday morning. It broke that Nathaniel Hackett is the new play caller, new guy, new man in charge. New man in charge for the Denver Broncos. So, initial thoughts. What do you think of this? What do you think of the hire? I love it. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yesterday uh, when we recorded this, I was gonna say. we put down p -p -p poker chips and I put all my money on Nathaniel Hackett. You I'm are going blue. sure. I'm going blue. All right, uh -huh. so I'll leave that. Blue. I just want to hear why you are for sure thinking that it's Nathaniel. I'm putting my money on Hackett. I like it. I think it's exciting. I think it's a total change of pace. I like that they're focusing on the offensive side. Um, and look, they need a quarterback. It, even if they don't get Aaron Rodgers, this guy has proven that he can develop quarterbacks. Mike, you talked to uh, some players today. About yeah, that. and I think excited is the big word okay. that we've heard. I talked to Lloyd Cushenberry, Romy, you just talked to Shelby Harris. Everybody's excited, right? And, and rightfully so. I think that you look at the last couple of hires, certainly you look at the last couple of years for the Broncos, and the excitement has been the one word that did not exist when it came to the offensive side of the football. So now you're getting a guy who's a young, Offensive minded guy. We've seen what he's done in as part of that offensive group in Green Bay. If he can bring half of that to Denver, it will be a step forward. With reason, uh, a lot of fans are going to start drawing lines to Aaron Rodgers, sure. Devontae Adams. Do you think that? that is a real possibility or that the odds just have increased a little because of the hire? I think the odds have increased a little, no doubt about that. I also think there are still a lot of hurdles to jump through. Yes, this is not comparable right. to the Peyton Manning situation. Right. There's cap considerations. There's what happens in a trade. How much is George Peyton willing to give up? And then there are other teams that are going to be involved here. So I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Do I think Denver is now more appealing? In Aaron Rodgers' mind, yes, absolutely. Green Bay doesn't have to trade it. Yes, they are over the cap. Yes, they are kind of backs against the wall, but they didn't last they year. Don't right. have, they don't. They do not have to trade him. You know what's interesting about that is like Rodgers and Devontae Adams kind of seem like a package deal. That's a really expensive package yeah. deal. Like that's not just. And what is and what has it gotten Green Bay? Let's be honest. Right. Sure, it got them 12 wins, but it got them knocked out in their first playoff game that they played in the divisional True. round of San Francisco. I just think. The new energy is going to be a welcome uh, sight here in Denver. It makes me go back to how there was no music at training camp. Mm -hmm. And yeah. again, it's just like, it, that may be, uh, it may sound so trivial, but that makes a big difference to like NFL players now. Like when they when they talk to the players on other teams and go, yeah, man, we're having a ton of fun. We yeah. have a DJ at our training camp. It's like, oh, ours is silent and not that exciting. Like, I think I think it's just a, a breath of fresh air that may just uh, work well this year. For It'll be nice if the Broncos come out and don't have a three and out on the first, <laughs> you know, like first Way time to jinx it. Like that's really, that's the, that's the standard, right? right? Like that's yeah. the bar, be better than that. Right, all right, so the head coaching search has stopped and now Roger's watch begins. I can't wait, it's just three months of, have Aww. we seen him in Boulder lately? Like it's, it's How, gonna be great. What is the over under on Twitter images of Rogers and Broncos? Oh my God. I, can there be the more limit, than I've seen already? The limit does like, not exist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we're uh, gonna go change clothes because uh, again, we shot our next two segments. Uh, uh, yes. Yesterday. So now we can officially return to having breakfast. Oh, there you go. That's a good, there you go. So um, again, we come back, some segments from yesterday. Welcome back into the sports office. Folks, let's start with, and I'm surprised that they can actually still play games at Ball Arena, considering they haven't melted the ice with this hot streak they're oh. on there. Am I right? The That's Colorado awesome. Avalanche, as we are like 40 minutes away from puck drop of what will be the streak breaker because we're talking about yeah. it. But at the moment, they have won 16 straight, tied for the fifth best streak in NHL history of home winning streaks. That's like that's actually really impressive. Yeah. This is where our trusty yes or no coin comes in. Mm. One of these two will have to have their argument picked for them. Which which one wants the flip? Who's feeling confident? Romy, you got it. Romy, it's Romy's flip. All right, Romy Bean. Yeah. Does this home winning streak matter at all? Quinn says no. Oh, all right. Why does this home winning streak mean nothing in the grand scheme? I mean, it's cool, it's awesome, but like at the end of the day, 
Does this matter when you're in the playoffs? No. Does anybody care that you won 16, 17, whatever it is in a row in the, in the playoffs? No. You know, if you if you win a Stanley Cup, do they even talk about this home win streak? Probably not. No. No. Very good point. It really doesn't. So yes, it's cool. Yes, it's fun. But in the grand scheme of things, does it matter? No. All right. So might you then get the uh, other side of the coin? Why does this actually matter? Well, for a couple different reasons. Because they are winning in so many different ways. Sometimes they're scoring seven goals and winning okay. seven one. Sometimes they're getting back to back shutouts from Pavel Francouz. Something they haven't seen since Patrick Waugh was in net back in 2003. I think when we look back on the season, will we say, oh, well, at least they won 17 straight home games? No, but I think we will say, remember that streak they had where they were learning how to win games different ways, learning that they could rely on their goaltending and putting themselves in position to have home ice in a game seven in the Stanley Cup playoffs? Yes, I think in the end, this streak and what they are doing right now will matter when it's all said and done. You know who actually made a really good point? I really didn't even like think about it this way, but it was when we were editing the sound with uh, Nazem Kadri. He said that they had been like working at building up this home reputation where it is hard to win here. And I think in the playoffs, if you do just get that little advantage yeah. where the away team is like, oh man, they're really tough to beat really, here, yeah, huh? then maybe it's just, just an advantage enough. Um, I think maybe the more impressive streak is winning 25 of 30 games. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So I, yeah, you're right. I don't know if like winning at home matters, but the fact that they are winning so much is just an incredible thing. To Nas's point, you already had the altitude, right? Teams are already True. thinking about that. They won't admit it, but they, they are thinking about that when they come to right. play here. And now if it really is hard right. to win at Ball Arena, the numbers it are just there. compounds. Uh, up next, these two are going to have some tough choices to make in our brand new segment called Gotta Choose One. Ooh. Sound sounds pretty self-explanatory, but stick around and see it. Welcome back into the sports office for our final segments. Uh, we're going to start out with a new segment called Gotta Choose One. I'm gonna give you a, a, a situation with some options and you have to choose just one. This is going to cover a lot of stuff in sport. So we're gonna start with some college basketball, okay? Mm, especially basketball. especially close, to, close to Colorado. If your NBA team had to draft one of the following, who would you draft? David Roddy or Jabari Walker? David Roddy. Gotta choose one. Whoa. <laughs> From the CU buff, even before I could, David Roddy. Just, David Roddy. Man, go Have for it. Have you seen that man? He gives me Nikola Jokic vibes. Now look, I'm not saying he's the next Nikola Jokic, but uh, there are things he does that gives me Jokic vibes in the sense okay. of the, the whole team can run through him. He makes these crazy passes. He's big, he's, you know, you don't expect the big guy to be doing a lot of what he's doing. I, I just, I just love watching David Roddy play. Uh, I, I love David Roddy for all the reasons that you just said. Still, if we're talking NBA, I'm going Jabari Walker. I That's, think he yeah. has a better NBA body. I think he has a better NBA game than David Roddy does. Plus, he has the NBA pedigree with his dad. Uh, I would take Jabari Walker over David Roddy in the NBA. All right, folks. Still expect Jamal Murray and MPJ to uh, come back to the Nuggets. I, I was seeing MPJ warm up against the Pistons the other night. He looks as close to ready as you could probably look, I think. You gotta choose one. Who helps the Nuggets more when they return? MPJ or Jamal Murray? Jamal Murray. Okay, all right. <laughs> Mike, you go first this time. Yeah, Jamal just brings more to the floor than MPJ does. MPJ's a good scorer, there's no doubt about that. He's a great shooter. Jamal brings you everything, and he, we said this when he got hurt, he is the heart and soul of that team. Now, Jokic has done a really good really job taking point. over that role. He's always been the best player, but he is the heart and soul of that Nuggets team. All those things plus the relationship, the connection that him and Nikola Jokic have. Fair. When they are on, two man game is when they are on the court together, it's the two-man game. You don't need anybody else, yeah. right? So, and, and I think that that will come back quickly. So in addition to everything you said, I just think when he's out there, it's like Jokic can actually mm -hmm. and, chill if he needs to. And MPJ is a great shooter, but when the blue arrow gets going, woo, woo. Fair. we've seen that. We've Watch seen play optimal. Yeah. All right, folks, we watched one heck of an AFC Divisional game. If Broncos fans just lucked out somehow and they had a choice between Burrow, Allen, or Mahomes giving a lifetime contract, who would you give the lifetime contract to? Gotta choose one. Mahomes. Mahomes? If, oh, yeah. Okay. If I could I would, only choose right. one. He had 13 seconds and he, <laughs> with 13, got three plays in, 13, 13 seconds. seconds. 
I mean, and I know, you know, part of that's coaching. You look at Josh Allen, a lot of his coaching. I think Joe Burrows, I think they're all going to have incredible careers, but I think Patrick Mahomes is top tier right now. Okay. I couldn't and, go with anyone else. And I think you have to include the fact that he's been there and done it. He's been to two Super Bowls. He won one. It looks like he may be heading for another one, depending upon what happens here in the next couple of days. I think you have to take that into consideration. I think Romy's right. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, they're going to go on to have heck of a career. There's no doubt about that. But if you're giving me a guy right now to take, I would take Mahomes. When it comes to Broncos, fans, if they look at Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and the people Patrick Mahomes surrounds himself with, <laughs> I you think Broncos fans, I'm telling you. You didn't tell us this was a package yeah. deal. We didn't know we were going to have to get Brittany and Jackson. You knew they were coming. This was on the field. They're staying yeah, in Kansas City. And you're telling me that if Patrick Mahomes was the Broncos quarterback, that no. the fans wouldn't no, rally no, no, around no. that outside activity? No, I'm telling you, if this was like a Twitter vote, I think a lot of Broncos fans would be like, do we really want to deal with this off-field well, stuff? Like, yeah. let's just get the, the guy that went to Wyoming and fix Elway's mistake for not drafting him first. That's what I think Broncos fans would go with. All right, you guys did well. That means it's time for our last segment. We always end the show with this. It's our hats off segment. This is where we give some recognition to someone who had a good week, good good day, good game, whatever, and didn't get enough recognition, and that's what we're hopefully here to do. Uh, guys, I'm gonna start. Jumping right in. Jumping right in. Yo, hats off to Todd Helton, yeah. okay, for getting a majority of the Hall of Fame voters to vote him in. Unfortunately, not how MLB works. 52% trending in the right direction, going up each year. I don't know, it seems like maybe one or two more years of going up, still a long way to go to get that 75% threshold, but I like that hats off. Give me the Romy hat flip. Bang. My Nailed hat's it. off goes to Jabari Walker and the CU hey, Men's hey, Basketball hey. Team for overcoming a double-digit deficit and beating Oregon in Eugene. First time since 2013. Huge accomplishment. And, you know, hats off to Tad Boyle. for every, Nobody knew what was going to go on with this Buffs team this year and finding ways to win a big game like this in Eugene. Can I get the Air Force hat, Romy? Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me just fly it over to you. Oh, oh. Um, jump, crash, and burn. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Joe Scott, uh, 250 oh, yeah. career right. wins. Former DU Pioneers head coach. Spent some time at Princeton. Spent some time at Air Force. Now is back at Air Force. 250 career wins. That's awesome. I don't care who you are. Congrats, Joe Scott. All right, that wraps it up for us. Unless you guys have something else to. I don't think so. No. Okay, so that does it. For Romy Bean, Michael Spencer, I am Ryan Green. Thank you for coming to the sports office.